Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with your senior leader, the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. I'm ready to run. I'm on fire. Wish I could take about a thousand of you with me. Go ahead and hit that share button before we press into our devotion. Listen, guys, we're going to read from Mornings with the Holy Spirit today. I've got quite the devotion that's going to challenge you to come up higher. And that's what you need to do. We all need to come up higher. Speaking of which, if you're in South Florida, I want to see you in church on Sunday. Oh, Jesus. If you're in South Florida, I want to see you at one of our services, 1047 a.m., 130 p.m., two different messages, two different worship teams, two different encounters. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, awakeninghouseandprayer.com. Get here. If you're in another state, you can't watch. You can still be part of our family. You can watch the service at ahop.online, www.ahop.online. You can even become a web church member and join my virtual life group most Tuesday nights, studying the life of David right now. You can get in on that. You can even watch the replay of the virtual life group if you can't make it live. Maybe you're in between churches. Maybe you are one who travels a lot. Maybe you just need a little extra meat to go with your milk. You can join our web services, ahop.online. Amen. God is good. Awakening prayer hubs. I'm looking for a thousand intercessory prayer warriors to transform into prayer leaders of prayer leaders of prayer leaders. There's never been a more critical time in the earth than now. And the Lord told me if we don't pray, 2021 will be a replay of 2020. 2021 will be a replay if we don't pray. We've got to begin to press into prayer. I'm looking for you, looking to raise you up. Awakeningprayerhubs.com, join that prayer movement. Cindy Jacobs, Lou Engel, Mike Bickle, all the major prayer leaders have endorsed this prayer movement. Hop on board and get equipped. Amen. There's eternal rewards for the intercessors. Ignite Network, we're almost four years old. Can you believe it? The Ignite Network. It's a prophetic family, a prophetic tribe. We're learning, growing together. Not like all these goofy, my God, there's so many goofy Facebook groups about the prophetic and the false prophets just swarm in there. You don't want to be in those groups. Why? Because there's a spirit of error in many of those groups. You don't want to be part of that. Don't let that spirit of error come upon you. Get in a safe environment of family. Let me judge your words. Ignite Network, ignitenow.org. Amen. Today's devotion is from Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. I'm ready to go higher. I'd like to take about a thousand live viewers with me. Amen. Maybe you are one of them. Today's devotion is titled, listen, I'm calling you to a new level of commitment. (laughs) I told you it was a challenge. I'm calling you to a new level of commitment. And here's what I heard the Lord say. You have been crucified with Christ. You were bought with a price. Your life is not your own, says the Lord. Lay it down and let Christ live through you completely. You'll live a miraculous life if you choose this path Pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow him. He's worth it, says the spirit of grace. I am calling you to a new level of commitment to Christ's cause. I am calling you to be a living sacrifice and a living epistle that speaks of Jesus. So choose the narrow path and reject the spirit of the world that tempts you to follow the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. My God, my God, who will accept the challenge today? Those who say yes are going up, going up, going up, going up. Because when you lift Jesus up, he'll lift you up. I said, when you lift Jesus up, he'll lift you up. Scripture references for today, Galatians 2.20, 2 Corinthians 3.2, 1 John 2.16. Now the prayer starter from the devotional. I choose. Now this is a, this is a scary prayer. Don't pray this if you don't mean it because God will God will answer it. God will answer this prayer. I said, God will answer this prayer. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Go back to bed. No, I'm just kidding. You better mean it. Listen, this will change your life today if you'll let it. You want more of Jesus? You want more power, more anointing, more joy, more peace? This is the way. Listen, I choose right now to lay down my life and let Christ live through me. But I know this is a daily choice. My will alone is not enough to walk this path. Will you strengthen my spirit to rise up as a living sacrifice to the one who sacrificed all for me? 
And of course, his answer to that prayer is yes and amen. So Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory for Jesus, your son, your perfect son, the lamb of God who took it away the sins of the world. We praise you for him. We praise the name of Jesus, the Lord Sabaoth, the Lord of angel armies. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you for sending your son, Jesus. We lift up that name, Jesus. We lean in to that name, Jesus, and everything it represents. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the right to take on that name. But it's also a responsibility to take on that name. So help us God, to understand the great and precious promises that you have made us in that name. The great and precious promises that you have made available for us freely in that name. Jesus paid the price for the promise. Jesus died to make the promise available to us. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful to you, God, our heavenly father, our good, good father, that you gave us your only begotten son to take away our sins as an entry point into glory, to take away our sins, to cleanse us from unrighteousness as a first step into eternity. You are so good. You had a plan. You've always got a plan. You've always got a way. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life of Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice once and for all. You sacrificed your life on that cross. You sacrificed your life for us so that we could take the first of many steps into glory. A glory now, then another glory, then another glory, then another glory. Moving, growing us, changing us from glory to glory. That is your process. You are always changing us, refining us, drawing us closer to you, into your presence, where there's fullness of joy and pleasures at your right hand forevermore. Your will for us is good, it's perfect, it's acceptable. Your will for us is astounding, it's awe inspiring, it's dumbfounding. You are that good. We praise you today for what you've done for what you're going to do, what you're doing this day. We praise you, God, for what you're doing in our life this day. Give us this day our daily bread. We walk by faith one day at a time. It's all about this day. Tomorrow has enough cares of its own. Yesterday has too many regrets. We're not looking back. We're looking up to see what the Father is doing this day. This day, this moment, Moment by moment, living in the presence of God because of the blood of Christ, because of faith in his name, in his sacrifice, in his resurrection. Because of faith in his resurrection, we find ourselves the home to resurrection power. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That is who we are. That is who you called us to be. To live, to move, to have our being in you. We want to go higher. We want to go through the glory doors. We want to go through the glory gates, the glory portals. We want to experience, we want to taste and see that you are good at another level. There's another level. There's another level. There's another level. Whatever level we have attained to by your grace, by the leadership of your Holy Spirit, by your mercy, by your wisdom. Wherever we have attained to, by the ordering of our steps, by the Holy Spirit, wherever, whatever level we are at, there's another level. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more of Jesus, there's more of the Holy Ghost, there's more glory, there's more encounters, there's more. But one thing I found in my walk with the Lord is the higher you go, the narrower the path. The higher you intend to go, the narrower the path. It's like when we first get saved, we have more grace to learn, to grow. We have not more mercy, but God answers all our prayers when we first get saved. And then we learn how to pray. And then we understand that we have to take more responsibility for our lives and the things we could do as spiritual babies. We can't do as sons of God. Paul said, 
When I became a man, I laid aside the childish things. I put the childish things away. When I became a man, when I became fully grown, when I grew up in the Lord, I set aside those things that all things are, pro- are, are, are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable for me. I have freedom. I can do certain things, but will that really advance my life into the glory? Will that really advance me toward my prophetic destiny? Will it really be helpful in the end? Is it really worth it through the lens of eternity? Paul said, I, I just... I laid some things aside. I counted it all as rubbish to seek to pursue Christ. John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he can increase. So I've learned in my walk with the Lord, the higher you want to go, the narrower the path becomes. You've got to leave more and more things behind, more flesh, more soulish ambition, more wrong thinking. These things have to be whittled away from your life. Guess what? The higher you want to go, The more of yourself, the flesh self, the carnal nature, you have to sacrifice. We become living sacrifices. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the entire renewal of your mind that you might present your bodies as a living sacrifice to God, which, by the way, is your reasonable service, Paul said, inspired by the Holy Spirit. God, you've called us to a new level of commitment today, and I know what that means. I know what that means because you don't call us to something that seems more difficult if you're not planning on giving us a greater reward in the spirit. More glory, more glory, more glory. You're inviting us to go through another portal of glory. You're inviting us to go deeper into your spirit but that requires something on our side, requires a new level of commitment requires us to lay aside some childish things, to stop looking backwards and start looking upwards. And we say yes today, God. We say yes. We are ready. And if we don't feel ready, make us ready. (laughs) Make us ready. We don't want to be in bondage anymore to the things of the world, the pleasures of the world. (laughs) The pleasures of the world cannot compare to the pleasures at your right hand. The allurements of the world cannot compare to the glory of heaven. God, we want to go where we've not been before. We want to see what we've not seen before. And that means we've got to start looking in a different direction. We've got to stop looking at worthless things. David said, I will not look at any worthless thing. He just was not going to put his eyes on anything that didn't glorify God. It wasn't worth it. God is calling you to the valley of decision this morning. Do you want more? And it's easy to say yes. Do you want more? And there's a more in your heart that's crying out in agreement right now. What are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Is it TV time? Is it the sports channel? Is it a little bit of sleep? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Father, would you help us to grab a hold of what we individually, personally need to do to go deeper in you? Because there's not one answer. It's not a blanket solution or direction or instruction. We're all different. We're walking different walks. We have different callings, different anointings. Different purposes. You have different plans for each one of our lives. We may have crossover. Ultimately, I know, God, that you just want to conform us to the image of Christ, but we're all in different places in our journey with you. We've all had different experiences. We all have different responsibilities in the natural, different lifestyles, different challenges, different obstacles, different opportunities, different gifts, different talents. So show us, God, what we need, what change we need to make. What do we need to do? Come on, this is a grow-up call today. What do we need to do? We've been crucified with Christ. That is our legal position. The old man has passed away. So, Father, would you help us to stop letting that old man have a voice in our life? If any any man be a new creature in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things become new. Would you help us for today to stop letting that old man 
that old self have such a strong voice in our life. We want your voice to be the loudest voice that we hear. Oh God, we want your voice to be the loudest voice that we hear. We don't want to give any ear to our flesh. We were bought with a price. Our life is not our own. Help us to remember that God, because life is busy. There's so many distractions. There's so many daily issues to deal with. Oh my goodness, it never ends. It's sometimes overwhelming. All the things on our to-do list, it just never stops. And we're always rushing and running around. And then when we don't have to rush and run around, we want to oh, just veg. We don't want to live a life like that. That's not abundant life. God, help us to make the shift. Help us to make just one small change that will lead us deeper into your glory. We want to live and move and have our being in you. We want to be mature Christians who are led by your spirit perfectly. Those who are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They're the mature ones, no longer children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine on Facebook, every false prophet on Facebook. Help us, Lord. Our life is not our own. So we lay it down once again. We lay it down once again. We, we, many, many of us, we, 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 we laid it down in a past season, but then we picked it back up again. God didn't say pick it back up again. Jesus said, I have the power to lay down my life, and I have the power to pick it up again. You know when he picked it up again? When he went to the Father in heaven when he was resurrected. Our life is not our own. We will sow this life as a seed in the earth. Being the people who love God, who know him and make him known in the earth, will pick up our life again in the new heaven and in the new earth. Until then, we're living sacrifices, burning and shining like John the Baptist. Would you help us, Lord, to get serious about this thing called Christianity? It's not a religion. It's a relationship. You're calling us to a new level. You're calling us to a new level. Help us to lay our life down and let Christ live through us completely. We want to walk in miracles. That's what it takes. We want to walk in the supernatural. That's what it means. Giving Yielding to the Holy Spirit, not just in a ministry time, but yielding to the Holy Spirit as a matter of course. Yielding to the Holy Spirit as much as we understand and discern his will. And where we don't understand and discern his will, we need to understand and discern his will. We need to grow. We need to grow up. We need to grow up. We need to grow up. There's grace to grow. There's grace for growth. Got to pick up that cross, deny ourselves, and follow Jesus. He's worth it. God is calling us to a new level of commitment today, to the cause of Christ, to be that light on a hill, to let our light shine, to be that salt in the earth, to preserve. God's calling us to be that living sacrifice, a living epistle that speaks of Jesus. So, Father, we right now, we choose that narrow path. Because the narrow path leads to greater glory. The narrow path leads to fullness of joy. The narrow path leads to joy unspeakable and full of glory, pleasures forevermore. The, the, the narrow path is not one we stumble upon, but it's one we choose. We're in the valley of Shechem today. We're in the valley of Shechem. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, Father, we say today, as for us and our house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord, not just with mouth service, but with heart service. Being led forth by the Spirit and truth and obeying him at a heart level. Not trying to figure it all out in our minds, but obeying him at a heart level. When he speaks, we say, yes, Lord, and we don't have to know how it's going to turn out. We don't have to know how to get where he's taking us. We just have to follow him because he's a good God and he died for us. So we reject the spirit of the world that tempts us to follow the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And we choose to lay our lives down for the one who died for us. 
to allow him to live through us, to take his rightful place in the center of our heart, to speak to us, to do miracles through us, to fellowship with us. We say, like Paul said, I die daily. It's a daily decision. We've got to make the decision every day, and we will. So, Father, strengthen our spirit to rise up as the living sacrifices, burning and shining for your glory. Bring us into glory encounters. Glory encounters. Bring us into glory encounters for your pleasure. Because it's your pleasure to give us the kingdom. Jesus said it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So we thank you, God, today, and we praise your holy name, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you feel empowered? We're going to deal with this enemy shaking his fist in your face now. I was reading in the book of Acts because many times I'll use the book of Acts as a devotional. It's got 31 chapters, and I'll read one chapter a day. I was reading about Stephen, and they were just, the religious people were just so mad at him. And he began to preach, and they began to accuse him of blasphemy. They began to breathe lies against him. False witnesses rose up against him, and he told the story all the way from Abraham to Jesus. He said, you guys crucified Jesus. And the Bible says in Acts 7, 54, listen. As council members listened to Steve and they became noticeably furious. You know what it looks like when someone becomes noticeably furious? Their face changes, their muscles tense, their eyes narrow, their lips purse. But another translation of the same scripture says the Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation. Listen, and they shook their fists at him in a rage. The Bible says they shook their fists at him in a rage. And that's what the enemy does to some of you. He shakes his fist at you in rage. What does that mean? He intimidates you. That's what it means to shake your fist at somebody. He intimidates you. He menaces you. He tries to scare you, put that spirit of fear upon you. He tries to blackmail you in the spirit. Well, if you... Don't stop praising the Lord. I'm going to put sickness on your family or whatever. He blackmails. He intimidates. He tries to keep you out of the will of God, but you're not going to fall for that. The enemy shakes his fist at you. Stephen did not stop. The Bible said when he first started talking, when he first started talking, he told the timeline of Abraham all the way through Moses, through David and up to Jesus. And when he started telling the story, the Bible says everyone was staring at him because his face shone like an angel. That was before he even looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, saw Jesus standing up at the throne, looking down upon him. He was so full of the Holy Spirit that his face was shining. See, the enemy hates the manifested glory of God in your life. He knows a person who walks in glory, who walks in the will of God is a threat. And the enemy started shaking his fist at Stephen, trying to intimidate him, trying to browbeat him, trying to bully him, trying to pressure him, trying to spook him, trying to terrorize and torment him, reflexing their demonic muscles, shaking their fist, making their threats, walking heavy. But Stephen didn't stop. He looked up to heaven and he saw the Lord Jesus standing, looking down on him ready to receive him. And they stoned him to death, but he went on to glory. Now that's a metaphor and says it really happened, but that's a metaphor. Whatever persecution you're dealing with, listen, whatever persecution of the enemy that you are dealing with, hear me now as we pray, whatever persecute, the enemy is persecuting you. That means shaking his fist at you. That means intimidating you. If you will stand up to it, if you will stand up to it, if you will not run in fear and be Cowardly, if you will use the name of Jesus, say it is written, you will enter another level of glory. Did you hear me? I said, if you will stand up to the enemy's persecution, forgive those who are persecuting you, not start shaking your fist back at the ones shaking their fist at you, not bow to the threats, you will enter another level of glory. So Father, today, would you help us? 
I'm always crying for help. Did you notice that? Sometimes I'm very aware that I'm always crying for help. That's okay. That's what King David did. Lord, would you help us today (laughs) to remember that when we are under persecution, there's a promise of glory. When we handle persecution the right way, in your word, there is a promise of glory. It says glory rests upon those who are persecuted for Christ's sake, for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of doing the will of God, for the sake of walking in the word, for the sake of pressing into the spirit. When we are persecuted because we're standing up for Christ, he stands up for us. And his glory rests upon us. It's another dimension of glory. There's so many dimensions of glory. Would you hear me? So, Father, help us today not to bow, not to run, not to swap evil for evil, but to trade the evil that comes to us to to, to pour out good, to be those who forgive the people who shake their fist at us, inspired by the enemy, empowered by the enemy. Help us, Lord, to be a people who understand that a glory awaits that we could not, listen, a glory awaits that we could not attain any other way. There's a particular kind of glory that rests upon you in the face of persecution. If you handle it the right way, do you understand me? There's a particular kind of glory. It's not the same glory as when you enter the joy of the Lord and holy laughter breaks out. It's not the same kind of glory as when a holy hush breaks out. It's a particular kind of glory. So if you've been persecuted, if the enemy's been shaking his fist at you, threatening you, you rejoice. 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 Forgive. Because there's a particular kind of glory that's going to be marking your life. Receive it. Father, we receive that glory. We don't treat it lightly. You are so good that what the enemy means for harm, you turn for glory. <laughs> You are so good that when the enemy tries to threaten us, intimidate us, get us to run away from your promises, and we stand and withstand in the evil day, leaning and depending on your grace, your sufficient grace, leaning and depending on you, not worrying about whether we understand it, whether we can see through it, but just knowing that you're there in the face of enemy attack, enemy of persecution, We respond the right way by your grace and you pour out a particular glory, a unique glory that makes it all worth it. I said the glory of God that will come upon you in the wake of your proper handling of persecution. It will be worth it to have been persecuted. You might not want to go through it again, but it will be worth it. You'll say it was worth it. You're going to 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 say it's worth it. You're going to say it's worth it. It's going to be worth it. Just linger on that for a moment. The glory that you're about to experience is going to be worth it. The glory that's going to be revealed to you in Christ Jesus as you enter heaven, it's going to be worth it. And no devil in hell can steal the blessing of God when you handle the persecution the right way. So we thank you, God. Empower us to handle this the right way, your way, the God way, the Bible way, so that we can experience the manifest glory resting upon our lives like it rested upon Stephen's life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeromo shambrakata. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. God is good. He's good. He's good all the time. He's good. He's good all the time. There's another glory for you. There's another glory for you. So what? The devil shook his fist in your face. He doesn't have any authority over you. So what? There's a new glory for you. Oh, you want to shake your fist in my face, devil? You want to intimidate me? I'm not falling for it. I'm going to forgive those through whom the enemy worked, and I'm going to stand in the glory. I'm going to walk in the glory. I'm going to press in to another level of glory. From glory to glory. Amen? In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. God is good. Guys, 
Amen. You want to sow today, you can sow at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. It's your support that helps us keep going and take these messages further out and develop new free content for you. Amen. Cash app is dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire. The text to give, text the word pray to 754-701-2161. Text to give, text the word pray to 754-701-2161. You want to use the PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. The Venmo, Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. And P.O. Box, you want to mail a check, a money order, you want to mail a book, a gift card, you want to mail a letter, testimony, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Amen. God is good all the time. I'll see you guys later today in the Prophetic Activation Challenge. Have a great day.